Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hump Day Hangouts. This is episode 54. Today is the 11th of November. Happy Veterans Day to everybody out there. Um, real quick, we want to say hello, obviously, and we got some great announcements, so we'll get this started. How's it going, Hernan? Hey, everyone. Hey, Adam. It's really good to be here. Hey, Marco. What's up? Hey, everybody. What's up? And last minute, not least, Bradley, how you doing? Good, man. Good. How are you? Good, good. Can't complain. Uh, it's been a busy week. We've just been putting the finishing touches on getting Video Powerhouse uh, ready to go. So we're happy to say that it is live. So I'm going to be dropping the link in here, and you can guys can go sign up away, right away. This is the embed network that we've been talking about for the past couple months. Um, uh, the story behind this, if we haven't told you, was basically we were looking for ways to go about and get our own video embeds for ranking our own videos. And we've been checking out some products that are out there, and not to name names or anything, but we were very unsatisfied, to put it nicely, with uh, what we found available out there. So we've put together uh, what we would call a pretty killer network. All right, this is very powerful. These are real sites that have metrics and are surrounded by IFTTT networks that we have built. All right, this is the same type of stuff that, that we provide through our own um, network services. So uh, I'm going to pop the link in there. Again, uh, we've been talking about it, so I'm not going to chat you up too much on it. But uh, by all means, if you're interested in ranking your videos, I highly suggest you check this out. So, well, I do uh, want to mention that <clears throat> we're, we're only opening up. It's, it's going to be a limited release because it is a new network. Um, we don't want to overload it. So we're only going to be allowing about 50 people in, and then we're going to shut it down until we can make sure that it's running smoothly with 50 people in it. So just so you guys know, there was a waiting list and everything else. Uh, you know, we're opening it up, but it's going to be a limited thing. And that's it's not a scarcity thing that we're doing. We're actually doing that specifically so that we can make sure we can handle the volume and work out any bugs because it is a new network. That said, uh, we're going to be reinvesting in that network to continue to build it out. Right now, it's just a general marketing video embed network. In other words, you can pretty much embed anything beyond besides what the typical like, you know, no go type things are like pharma, porn, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but as we start bringing customers in, we're going to reinvest into the network and build out at least five top level category themed networks. So plus the general network. So we'll end up with six, each having its own hundred sites, minimum of 100 sites as the tier 1, plus 20 web 2s as part of the IFTTT rings around each one of those. So it comes out to be 100 tier 1 embeds and 2,000 tier 2 embeds, um, embeds, backlink, social signals, that sort of thing f per network. And we're going to have like essentially five top level categories like, you know, health and wellness, um, construction slash home services, marketing or uh, business slash financial, you know, those kind of um, top level categories, so they'll be themed. So just so you guys are aware, currently it is not a themed network, it is just a general network. We're going to use that while we continue to build out the other higher level categories. And uh, obviously as that continues to get developed, we'll be giving out notice notifications of it as well. So you want to add anything else to that, Adam? No, I think that's good. I'm glad you uh, followed up on that. I got excited about uh, just some of the upfront stuff and forgot about that. But yeah, the network build-out is something we take seriously. Again, it's because it's something we wanted, uh, so we're going to develop that um, as we go. So it's ready to go right now, and like I said, we're using it. But then the end goal is, as we continue to bring people on, we're going to grow the network. So Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm good. Do you guys have any other announcements? Or I think that was a big one for today. Yeah, that was it. Um, I'll give a shout out to, uh, let me grab the screen and I'll show those of you that are doing tiered networks uh, for your own businesses, your own websites, whatever. Let me grab the whole screen. Uh, Lisa Allen, she is a developer. She develops a lot of um, software programs um, that are for marketers and she's she's a good one. I've actually followed Lisa Allen stuff for um, for years now. In fact, mm -hmm. I remember right after I got introduced to IFTTT, she did a pro, uh, uh, program with, she collaborated on a training program with Peter Garrity that mm -hmm. showed how to set up triggers in Google Calendar, which was pretty cool to resyndicate stuff. And that was several years ago. God, that had to be three years ago now. But um, So she was kind of on the cutting edge of that back then as well. So uh, anyways, I just want to give a shout out to her. She's got this new product called RSS Feed Finder. That's really cool because it's such, and that's what I like about her software is it's really simple. It's not like a Swiss Army knife 
uh, type uh, software. They use the software she create usually do one thing, and they do one thing very well, but they're very simple, and that's what I like about them because too many softwares have too much of a learning curve. This one's really cool, guys. I just want to you know again give a shout out because I found out this this works really well for finding feeds to use for um, your tiered networks, as also for if you're using feeds to populate content on like PBN sites, which is a good idea to do so. Uh, these are. This is a great way to do it, and I don't know if you guys can you can you see the software? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, there are a few different search or places that it will go out and find feeds. Uh, if you select any, it will select from any of the available um, places. But it'll search for blogs. Use the Google Blogs search engine, uh, Pinterest boards, YouTube, Tumblr, and v Vimeo. And so uh, you just put a keyword in. So for example, if I wanted to find some YouTube videos, and let's just say I wanted to do a video on. Um, I don't know, guys. Give me a keyword. Let's just say dog training. Everybody knows that. We've done that to death. But say dog training. I could click search feeds, and you'll see it'll start populating very quickly with the um, the YouTube channel, the site URL, the, the channel URL, the site, the channel RSS feed, and then the keywords. And you can put multiple keywords in here. It doesn't have to be just one. And I'm going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> clear it, but w you could export it, and it just makes it really easy and fast. And so, I mean, that's all it does. It's real simple, but I just wanted to give that a shout-out, guys, because this is something that um, I just started playing with a couple days ago, and it's a, it's a really cool piece of software, and it's inexpensive, too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a huge time saver because if you have to go out there and actually, you know, search the dog training YouTube channels or, you know, you have a ton of – you have a bunch of other – um, properties over there and platforms over there. It's a huge time saver because just finding you know five or six or even ten relevant feeds to combine with your outer tiers is kind of a uh, you know a manual process that yeah. takes quite a lot of time. So I think that this is a great tool. Yeah, and that's that, and that's my point is if if you guys that have taken the IFTTT SEO Academy training, you'll know that in the advanced RSS. Uh, training where we talk about f collecting related content feeds. It's it was I've always done it manually, or I have my VAs do it now. But it's always been a manual process, and this will just speed that up considerably. So, and word on the street is that uh, mastermind members will be getting a chance to talk and learn from uh, Lisa Allen about how she does some of her RSS content. Yeah, we're going to be having her on as a guest, um, probably what in January, I think. Yeah, I think so. We're firming things up with her. Okay, cool. All right. Well, with that said, let's get into questions. Um, I, I do want to give a shout out to Wayne and say, you know, thanks for ruining Hump Day Hangout today, Wayne. <laughs> it cannot be unseen. That is an awful, <laughs> awful picture. It's <laughs> so, not that bad. <laughs> all right, Daniel. He's got the first one. He says, "Hey guys, my question is regarding indexing and the importance of it. Over the years, everything I've learned in SEO has suggested that indexing is everything, and if the links you're building are not getting indexed, then they are worthless. Well, that's not necessarily true." Um, the problem I am noticing mainly with my indexing rates is getting FCS and GSA links indexed, which I am using to power up my IFTTT networks and also some of my IFTTT posts. I currently use Backlink Commando plugin, Backlink Indexer. Adam, if you want to grab that post URL and drop that so that people um, see it in case they're not aware of that. Um, actually, you know what? I think. Do you have it handy or do you need me to grab it? Because I have uh, it. If you've got it handy, go ahead. Okay, I've got it. I know I do. Right here, and I'll actually post this at the top. Here, I'll give it to you, Adam, so I can keep yeah, reading. Go ahead. All right. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. I currently use Backlink Commando plugin, Backlinks Indexer, and when I check the indexing rates using Inspider Backlinks Monitor and Scrapebox, I'm noticing very low indexing rates. I also use the Google indexing tool, but it's simply not practical for large numbers of links. Question: Do you guys actually check or even recommend checking the indexing rates of your backlinks, and how important do you feel it is to get them indexed? Um, okay, so Daniel, to answer the first part of the question, all I do is the backlinks commando and backlinks indexer. That's as far as I take it, and honestly, that's all I care about. And you're right, most mm -hmm. backlinks uh, analysis softwares or, or programs, applications, whatever, are not going to show those links. For example, Majestic uh, will does very rarely shows Web 2.0 type links. Uh, Moz or Open Site Explorer definitely doesn't. SEM Rush usually doesn't. Ahrefs is about the one that shows the most, and even that, it's a limited amount of the w of the Web 2s that it shows. However, that said, 
if you are using the index, the automatic indexing, like I said, trust me, Google is seeing those links. And in order to prove it, uh, if you're doing it for videos, you won't be able to tell. But in order to prove it, for if you're using IFTTT networks for websites, for any for any of your websites or blogs, if you have your um, website connected to Search Console or formerly Google, Google Webmaster Tools, and you go in there, you'll see under the um, you'll see links to your site, and you'll be able to see all of them. You'll be able to see the links from WordPress and Tumblr and uh, Digo and Delicious and you know all the different sites in the networks. So it's not a matter of, it, it, you're right, most software applications or SEO backlink analysis applications are not going to show the links, but as long as Google is seeing them, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Hernan, jump in. I'm going to pause the screen for a minute and open up Search Console so I can show them where to look for that. Sure, yeah, and I'm, I think you made a great point over there, Bradley, because... We are using on IFTTT. We are using a ton of of, of properties of Google uh, partners have, so they will feed um, even if they are not indexed. They will feed um, information to Google. So that's for once. Also, Daniel, have in mind that the best link that you can get is the one that will also bring you traffic, and for that, usually it has to be indexed or it has to be in a big platform. Um, but also, I have seen that no index, do follow links, still pass shoes, not as much juice as a do follow, do index, uh, an index do follow link will, but they will still pass shoes. I, I've been preaching about, you know, no index PBNs or whatnot. However, I wouldn't pay that much of attention of getting, for example, FCS and GSA links indexed, but I would rather focus that energy on getting your tier one links indexed. That's you know, correct. the, the that are pointing back to your website and the links that are coming from authorities, those are the ones that you plug on Backlink Commando and those are the ones that should receive most of your attention. If you're doing, uh, if you're making great tier one links, if you're great, doing great manual tier one links like guest posts or, I don't know, IFTTT or press releases, they will get indexed automatically and that's the name of the game, I mean. Yeah. Uh, indexing, and it's, it's something that we pay attention but uh, as um, automatically as possible. That's my yeah, point. and that's the point. The, exactly right. I mean, it, you know, we, we make an effort to get them indexed, but I don't care if the cert, if the SEO analysis apps show it, show them. Because to be honest with you, why why would you want? And I've I've said this several times before on these um and in, in various webinars, but why would you want? all of those links to show in Majestic and Ahrefs and all the tools that all other SEOs use because then they're going to easily be able to see what it is that you're doing. And right. so to be honest with you, I don't care that they're not shown. In fact, I kind of like the fact that they're not being shown in those kind of tools because that way people don't know what the hell I'm doing by just looking at my backlink profile. You know what I'm saying? So as long as Google sees them, that's all that matters. Whether the other um, services will index them and display them or not, it doesn't really matter. And so here's an example, howtoseo.us, which was a blog I had set up as actually, I think it was part of the IFTTT training when I was um, setting all that stuff up. Anyways, this is a, a site that I have, and inside of Search Console, you just go over to the search traffic, the drop down, click it, it will expand, and then you click on links to your site, and you'll see right here, if I click on more, it's going to open it up. Now take a look at this, guys. You can tell this is an IFTTT ring. It, exactly the same properties that we use for IFTTT rings are right here. You can see WordPress. There's 579 links. Blog.com, Blogspot, or Blogger, Flavors, Rebel Mouse, Tumblr, Curator, FriendFeed, which is now defunct. But uh, you can see that there's all the different properties. There's Digo down here, Delicious. Um, these are all links coming from those properties. And that's all that matters. As long as Google's seeing them, you're good to go. Yeah, and you know that Rebel Mouse, it will not index most of the time. I don't know why, but Google sees it, uh, yeah. which is all that matters. So. Okay, so we're going to move hey, on. Um, hey, Bradley, no, if, if I can just add something to sure. this. I think if, if you're paying too much attention to whether your, your backlinks that you're using in FCS and GSA are indexing, you, you're actually focusing on the wrong thing. What, what you need to be focusing on is whether... Your T1 is, is getting powered up, and number two, whether they're delivering traffic to your website. I mean, yeah. because that, the result that you're trying to get is, is, is traffic from these social media websites and traffic to the website. 
So that's what he needs to be paying closer attention to rather than whether something indexes or not. So check your rankings, check your traffic, check your referrals, and that's going to tell you whether your, your link building campaign is successful or not. That's correct. All right, so he says, am I really, am I overthinking this uh, whole indexing thing? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, as long as, and, and all you need to do is check Search Console to make sure that you're seeing links, uh, the Google seeing the links. For all other tools, don't worry about it. You know, the, the I absolutely set up Backlink Commando and Backlinks Indexer for all of my IFTTT rings because it's just an auto, it's an automated thing. It only takes a few minutes to set it up. Once it's set up, it's 100% automated where it'll send them to be indexed. And uh, and that's all I care about is and that just helps Google to see them. I don't care about the rest of the other apps showing them. So, okay, Sky says, can you go over how you do on-page optimization? Also, when you purchase services on Fiverr or Source Market, how far out do you go to protect your money site? For example, would you purchase a domain stacking service and use that on Tier One, which directs direct links to your money site? Okay, Sky, I can appreciate your first question about how to do on-page optimization. That is an entire training course in itself. We cannot obviously answer that here. Uh, that would take up the rest of the time and then it would still be a le leave a lot of questions unanswered about how to do it. <laughs> so if you want to learn on page optimization I would recommend that you join our mastermind where we talk in, uh, in depth and have lots of training in there already about that sort of thing um, because on page optimization. Also if, if you're not already in the master class uh, we went through several site builds in there now, local site builds, affiliate sites, that sort of thing where on page optimization is talked about as well. So that's another place for you to learn that. Okay. Um, as far as purchasing services from like Fiverr, Source Market, or SEO clerks, that sort of thing, guys only use those to power up like second tier properties or beyond or if you're using it like if you're doing a churn and burn it's okay to use that kind of stuff but do not ever link from those kind of gigs directly to your money site ever in fact I wouldn't ever use those kind of gigs to link to your first tier sites either um, tier two and beyond yeah you can do it but to be honest with you the problem with those guys is that people use templates at, look would you set up would you take your time to set up uh, a GSA campaign, if you if you had GSA, you were paying for the servers and the captchas and the proxies and everything else. Would you take the time to set up link campaigns for people for five bucks? And then I think Fiverr takes a dollar of that, so you get four dollars for a, a link building gig. I mean, you got to think about that. I certainly wouldn't. So these guys, what they do is they set up a, a particular type of template. And then they just cram as many gigs into that template as they possibly can. So there's a huge footprint. So, and it's the only way that they can do it because it's not, they're not making enough money on the gig in order to, to, to justify spending any time on setting up like unique campaigns, right? So, to be honest with you, those are really, really, really poor link building gigs. I, I don't recommend doing it for anything other than a churn and burn strategy or for, uh, you know, tier two and beyond. You want to add to that, Hernan? I know you probably got something to say about it. I, yeah, but no, Bradley. I if, if I can just add a little, a little sure. bit of something. Our foundation is keep your your money site and your tier one pristine. Keep right. it clean because, I mean, this is your brand. This is who you are. This is, this, is, this is what you're showing the world. And if you're going to throw garbage at who and what you are, then th that's how it's going to end up. Whereas if, if, if you keep it clean, if you do, the, if you do things the way that, that we, we teach you, to do them, you're going to keep it clean. You're going to power it up. Then you go out to tier two, tier three, and and maybe do whatever whatever you want out there because it doesn't matter that far out. But at, at yeah. tier one and on your money site, and especially if it's a client site, don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah. And Sky, if it is your own website, and as Marco was saying, you have you can uh, risk it in a way. You can go ahead and, and, and purchase a, an, an XYC domain, you know, and 301 it, and use, for example, that domain stacking service, which I'm not entirely clear, um, clear what that is, but I think it has to do with 301s and whatnot. But you can have a switch box in between. But then again, I wouldn't point it even like with a switch box. I wouldn't point it to my uh, to directly to my money side. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, me neither. I mean, look, I don't know anything about the domain stacking service that you mentioned, but I can tell you, like Fiverr gigs, SEO clerks gigs. I mean, there, there's certain there there are, uh, there's a time and a place to use those kind of things, guys, but it's not anywhere near your money site. I can tell you that. So, 
Right, Paul says I've been setting up blogger accounts in IFTTT networks and when I go to set up the G Plus badge the ID number in both the profile and the page URLs are both the same number. No, you're wrong, Paul. You're, you're confusing two different pages on one Google account instead of the, there's a difference between a Google profile and a Google page. And what you're listing right here, both yet both address work to each you say, here's an example of the latest account I'm trying to build out. As you can see, the ID numbers are the same, but yet both addresses work to each page. Well, that, see, that's because this is going to be, this looks like a profile instead of a page, yeah. okay? There are different tabs. Yeah, and, and, and so all your, what you're showing here is just the different, um, wait a minute, hold on, let's go back to about... Yeah, okay, so the only thing, you this is the same. If you change the tab, all you're doing is changing, it's basically like, this is like a mini website, and these are just pages, okay? So you're, this is a profile. What you need to do is take a look at your Google Plus page, and that's going to be a different, um, uh, you know, ID number, okay? That'll be a different ID number. And you have to make sure that inside a blogger that you're selecting whether you're using a profile page or a profile, or, or excuse me, or a... Um, a profile badge or a page badge. You have to specify that and you have to make sure that you have the corresponding ID in correctly. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense, Paul. Um, I, you're, I think you're confusing the difference between pages on a Google Plus profile or uh, like, you know, in internal pages, I should say, or, or other tabs in order to keep the terminology straight. Let's say other tabs. These would be considered other tabs on this profile. Okay? So, but that's not the same as a, a Google Plus page is going to be different than a profile. And a lot of the times you can just tell because of um, the, the about page itself. You're going to see a different set of um, categories here or sections, a different set of sections over here. You won't see a contributor to on a page. You, you only see a contributor to section on a profile. Um, if you want to take a look at, let's see if we've got a page open. Let's go take a look at pages real quick. And we'll just take, let's see, okay, stop that. Let's go look at, well, let's go look at this one, How to SEO. This is a business page. Wait a minute, there we go. They changed the menus, the navigation inside of Google Plus, and it's weird to me. All right, so this is the difference. So you see, this this is what you'll see on a page. The cat, the ID up here is going to be different, obviously, and then also you'll see story, uh, communities, and then you'll see links. But you'll notice there's no contributor to section here. They don't have that because a contributor to section is is for Google authorship, which is still alive and well. They just don't show authorship images and search results anymore, guys. So authorship is still alive and well. So you'll see contributor to section right here in about and that means you can set up authorship which means this is a profile where this is a page does that make sense hopefully that's clear so Paul just make like I said just double check if you purchased networks from us you're gonna see a clear line uh, as a matter of fact let me just open up this real quick and we'll show you in the account workbook template there is two sections for this there's a Google Plus profile right here that goes right here and the Google Plus page, which goes right here, they're going to be two different URLs. Not two different URLs, meaning it either says posts or about at the end. It's going to be two different um, Google ID numbers. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Guys, did I explain that clearly enough, do you think? Yeah, I think okay. it makes sense. Yeah, that, that was clear. All right. Good enough. Now, where were we? Did I lose the page? I hope not. I uh, Chick looks like he's got the next question. It looks like I lost the event page, so you're going gotcha. to have to bear with me while I find it. Excuse On me, the guys. upside, he said, loving the master class so far, so thank you, Chick. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I got so many damn accounts tied to this account now, it's hard to find everything. All right, here we go. I left it on the... Oh, okay. I left it on the... Too late, too slow. Yeah, I just did the same thing. All right. Uh, question IFTTT continuity programs. I've got a good grip on pricing for setting up the networks, but not afterwards. Can you give me some pricing examples for both network monitoring and content marketing, assuming both 
one tiered network and two tiered network. Thanks. Yeah, Chick. What I do is I don't I don't sell network monitoring or network managing services. I sell content marketing services because it's a lot more of an upsell. Um, unless the client is doing their own content, which rarely happens. Um, I mean, it's possible, but it rarely, at least in the industries that I work in, most of the times the the customer or the you know the the client will have good intentions to do the content marketing, but they never they end up you know they'll end up half-assing it for a couple weeks and then calling me and saying screw this, how much for you to do it for me, which is what I like you know, and I fully intend on them coming to me to do the handle the content marketing for them anyway. So <laughs> I don't have a pricing for network management. Um, if somebody is handling their own content and all I'm going to be doing is making sure that the networks are working and uh, and technically I don't even really do that. All I do is build links to the networks then and then I just sell them on a link building package which again at 100% varies depending on the client that I'm talking to. There is no, I have no packaged prices for that because it's obviously I always charge according to what they're willing to pay. <laughs> If that makes sense, because all all industries are going to be different, and uh, you know, and, and each client's going to be different, and each geographic area that you're, you know, for clients are going to be different. So there's going to be different dollar figures depending on each one. There's so many variables. But as far as content marketing, that again, it depends on the industry I'm in. But I can give you some examples for like the contracting industries that I do most of my work in. Um, you know, I'll charge anywhere between fifteen to twenty dollars per. Uh, article, um, or excuse me, I'll pay anywhere between. Um, it, it it varies on what kind of tier ones or uh, client site that it is. If it if it has to be high quality content, and some clients are pickier than others, um, some clients could care less that they don't even care that they got a blog. All they want is to get calls coming in, and the blogging helps. And so for that, I can I'll pay anywhere between eight to ten dollars per post. And I'll charge them anywhere between fifteen to twenty dollars per curated post, and I hire that out. That's completely done by my curating outsourcers. Um, but then for some of my clients that are higher, that are higher end or care more about their blogs, which I, you know, I would expect a client to care about their blogs, but a lot of them don't. But the ones that pay higher, up, they'll pay me anywhere between twenty-five to thirty-five dollars, depending on the client. Twenty-five to thirty-five dollars per curated post, and I usually will pay out between fifteen to twenty on that. So I'm getting almost a hundred percent markup on all of my content marketing, and then it's just a matter of frequency. So, for example, most contracting clients will do a, a two posts per week, and so if I'm charging the client fifteen dollars per post and I'm paying out eight dollars a post, it's um and and then essentially they're paying thirty dollars a week or one hundred and twenty dollars a month for um, content marketing, and that's on the low end. But most of my content marketing gigs that I, or you know services that I offer for clients run anywhere between two hundred to three hundred dollars per month. And again, it's a hundred percent outsourced on my end. I just have to initially get the outsourcer set up, and then it's done a hundred percent on autopilot by my VAs, and I just collect a check every month. So uh, you know, again, most most of my content marketing's run between two to three hundred a month. I do have some clients though that we post three, even as much as five times per week. And that can run in the five six hundred dollars a month. Okay. Yep. And I would also add that if you want to fully outsource the link building as well, you can purchase from us and add a I don't know one hundred percent up on the, uh, above that. And if you're charging for monitoring, you can also plug the networks on serpspace.com. Go open an account there; it's free, and you will put the networks there, and you can easily. Add a hundred percent over there. So you know, either way, it's fully outsourced. Yeah. Yeah, and guys, you know, like I said, most of the industries I work in aren't real content-heavy industries. So you know, five or six hundred dollars, even for the heaviest of my clients, is actually rather low for content marketing. And um, I don't know if you saw this. There was um, damn it, I, I put this in chat the other day, guys, yesterday. But there, uh, shit, I can't remember. One of the big data big data companies that analyze data and they project trends um, with the with, with you know economic circumstances for certain industries and that sort of thing I can't remember the name of it if I can find it later I'll post it on the events page but it's estimated that the content marketing industry digital content marketing is to reach what was it 19 billion dollars by t something like that do you remember Adam I posted I this yeah, I thought it was no I'm not joking I thought it was 
300, which sounds crazy. 300 billion by 2019, right? I have I have the link. I'll drop it into. The okay, link. yeah. If you don't mind, if you checked, it, it's it's insane. <laughs> like, I mean, no, no, I, I, I got it. I'm there's a it huge in. opportunity for making money as a content marketer. And the beautiful thing about content marketing, guys, is you're not selling results. You're selling activity, right? And that's the beautiful thing about it. Because you know, in SEO, guys, we set we often sell results. We're often saying, promising that we're going to get first page rankings or whatever and and that's difficult to put it I mean we can we do it but it's difficult whereas when you're just selling a service you're selling you're selling activity then it's just the it's the activity that you're selling not the results that it produces and content marketing is one of those things that everybody should be doing that has a website but most people don't want to do or know how to do and uh, that's where you can step in and not even do it yourself you can outsource it and actually, and like I said, I make about 100% markup, roughly 100% markup on all my content marketing services, and I don't do a damn thing other than manage my VAs. Okay? And it works really well. Okay, Ed, I saw this. He posted this in a support ticket as well, but we'll run through some of these because this is, if you have these questions, maybe others do as well. This is specific to IFTTT stuff. Is there a way to add pocket links to Google Plus page and about page? The, co the current pocket account creation has changed, and they do not allow you to use an email account anymore. They make you sign up with Twitter or Facebook. Okay, well, then you sign up with Twitter because you'll have a Twitter account in your network anyways. I don't recommend using Facebook unless it's for a tier uh, or a branded property. Then you want to set up a Facebook page, not a new Facebook account or under a new profile. You want to set up a page under your account or a client's account, if that's the case. Um, otherwise, just use Twitter. Also, once the account is created, they do not give you a profile URL. That's correct. They never gave you a profile URL that I know of. Um, because of that, wondering how to connect everything now since there is no prof profile URL. Again, I don't think Pocket ever had a profile URL. But where Pocket... Guys, if you're not going to be using the Advanced RSS Academy training, if you do not use that or you don't plan on using it, then don't even bother setting up Pocket or Instapaper for that matter. Because the only reason why those two are valuable is because it gives you an output RSS feed that you can use to, to uh, syndicate and submit to um, directories and aggregators as well. That's where the power of Pocket and, I, and Instapaper come in. If you're not going to be doing the advanced RSS strategies, then it's not, it, they're basically worthless because Google's not going to see those links inside of those the, the, in, in Pocket or Instapaper. So because of that, you there is no profile URL, and again, I don't think there ever was. If you want to add a link to your Google Plus page for Pocket, you can, but you would just have to link to the RSS URL because that's the only URL that you get. That's out. It's the only external URL that you get for Pocket. Everything else is done inside the application. Does that make sense? Was I clear on that? Here, guys, I can... I can show you inside of Pocket. I, I, I was already logged into my Pocket account, but inside of Pocket, if you go over to your name or the, the persona's name, you click the drop down and you go to options. From here, you want to go to uh, privacy, click on privacy, and here you'll see RSS feed, and your RSS feed is public. If it's not public, you need to set it to public. And then you, what you want to use is all items feed. If you right click and copy that link address, now it's on the clipboard, and in fact, I'll open up. Um, Firefox and show you what that looks like. This is the actual feed URL for Pocket. Okay, so this this will give links to all the content in your Pocket account, but this is the only public URL or external URL that you get inside of, out of Pocket that I know of. Okay, so you can use this in your um, Google Plus page if you want, if if you want to link it link to it. Okay. All right. Uh, is it possible to add our Instapaper feed URL to pinboard.in? If so, how would we do that? Um, I guess, yeah, you could. You would do it in IFTTT. You just use the RSS2 pinboard.in recipe, right? And then you just use the Instapaper feed URL as the trigger. And you can do the same thing with you. Guys, If it can, can you syndicate to pinboard using an RSS feed? Yes. You do that inside of IFTTT. As long as you have an RSS feed, you can use it to post to anything using IFTTT, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know how the native Instapaper channel will work with pinboard.in. I, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to test it because if you can post to, usually if you can post to Instapaper, you can also post from Instapaper. You know yeah. what I mean? Natively. 
but we will have to test it out. And as long as there's an RSS output for Instant Paper, which there is, mm -hmm. it's just like this. Like for example, if I was to take this pocket URL, RSS URL, and use this as the trigger to 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 feed Pinboard.in, and Pinboard.in is just a bookmarking service, so it's not going to take any. There's no content here, anyways. All it is is a link to the to to the pocket item which is a, a direct link to the article itself that I've saved in my pocket account. And so all that the, the um, and, and remember, we're setting this up to where we're feeding our own blog posts into pocket or our own YouTube URLs into pocket. So your RSS feed is going to be populated with your own links anyways. And then what you can do is take the RSS feed and sub use that as a trigger for pinboard.in, which is a bookmarking service or Delicious or Digo, any one of those, and all it's going to do is just feed these links into those bookmarking services. So there's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly do that. All right. Uh, on, let's see. On our persona-based tier two rings, what should we do with all the leftover YouTube channels and Google Google Plus profiles, etc.? Nothing. Build links to them. That's what you do. I mean, all those are semantic hubs. They're just places to be able to tie all of your other profile accounts together in one location. And then you can hammer those pages with links. Okay. So, for example, on here, if you have all your links in your blogger se in, in the in the the links section, you have all the different links to all of your profiles. Even on tier two, where you're not actually adding videos to those channels, you can if you want. But typically, there um, the Google Plus pages and the YouTube channels on tier two are just there so that you can add all of your links together in one location, and then you can hammer these with links, with external links. And that's where we talk about GS, uh, FCS, GSA, that sort of thing. We have a service for that as well. Okay. Having trouble finding the correct feed format for my YouTube channel as it add it to properties. Tried all the ones attached in the training, but it doesn't look like it's summary feed, content feed. They don't seem to be working, but then again, I could be doing something wrong. There should be an update training, Ed, inside the training about how the R Google, our YouTube changed their API and it messed their RSS feeds up, and that should be already covered in the update section of the training. And I will post the link in here. Okay. And uh, you've got the YouTube RSS examples somewhere else? Is that what you're doing? On the support uh, page, we've got... Okay. Uh, and, um, and just so you know, some of the services that used to work with YouTube feeds don't work anymore with the new feeds. And that's just the way that it is. You know? I mean, welcome to the web. The things evolve. And, that, and so if, you're, if you do have the correct feed format, Ed, and it's not working, just move on. Don't waste more time on that. Okay. There's, uh, there's too many other things that you could be doing that are working, and that's why I said, guys, I've said this many times before, but those of you who hadn't heard it, if you if you got properties that aren't working properly in IFTTT, nine times out of ten, first of all, always go double check, make sure you've got everything connected properly. But if everything is connected properly and it's just not working, move on. Stop wasting time because 90% of the time, it's going to be an issue with either IFTTT or the Web2 platform itself that will get resolved on its own. And you spinning your wheels trying to make it work is not going to help it. In fact, all it's going to do is end up leaving you frustrated and you will have wasted time that you could have been setting up other properties that do work correctly. So my, again, I'm not saying if it doesn't work, just move on. I'm saying if it doesn't work, make sure all of your connections are correct. But if even after then you're you're 100 percent positive that all your connections are correct and it's still not working, just move on and put a cal you know make a calendar note to go back and check on it in five days or seven days or ten days, whatever. And then most of the time, again, nine out of ten times, it will have it will have sorted itself out and start working by by then. And you will have saved yourself loads of time. How do I know this? Because I used to be a perfectionist with all that and used to try to make everything work 100% of the time, and I can't tell you how many hours I lost trying all that before I realized that I was completely wasting time. I was procrastinating from doing other stuff that would actually move my business forward. So, Okay. Um, Digo, do we add the bookmark library or profile URL to the Google Plus page links? Flip a coin. It doesn't really matter. Uh, again, you're getting a little bit too far into the weeds. Like, it really doesn't matter, Ed. It, it, use the bookmark URL or the profile URL. The bookmark URL is always going to show your um, most recent bookmarks, where the profile URL only shows, I think, the other connected accounts 
and I think like I don't know a few a few bookmarks or whatever. So, but it really doesn't matter. They both re they both resolve to your Digo property, so it really doesn't matter. One note: When do we add the short? Do we add the short URL? It gives us the longer one. To the do do we add the short URL? It gives us or the longer one. Excuse me, I read that incorrectly. The Google Plus page once again completely doesn't matter. <laughs> Flip a coin. Okay, they both resolve to the same location, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Curator and, and of paper. Sorry, Bradley, but um, G Plus is a semantic habit, so it really doesn't matter at the end of the day which URL you are using as long as you are using them all. I mean, all, all of the profiles, or most of them right. at least. You know? That's right. But but they're, the short URL, longer URL, really doesn't matter. They're, they're, they both resolve to the same location, so just use just pick one. Curator and Paper.ly, they will not accept the YouTube channel feed URLs. Again, lots of things have changed because of the YouTube's API being changed. The URLs shown in the training are not working, and I'm undoing, or I'm doing something incorrectly, I'm getting the error message every time I try to add the feed to properties. So the idea with this Curator and Paper.ly is if you do have the feed format correct using the updates um, that Adam just posted again, uh, then just don't don't try to add YouTube to those anymore. Instead, use one of your tier one properties that are already getting videos syndicated to properly, like Blogger or WordPress or Tumblr. Grab one of those RSS feeds and use that in Curator or Paper.ly instead of your YouTube channel direct. Guys, there's workarounds for all this stuff. You got to get creative. You know, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, what we give you guys is a framework, but you're more than welcome to switch it up, experiment, try different things. The, the thing is, is if your YouTube RSS feed isn't working for a property, but it is, your YouTube channel is properly posting to Tumblr or WordPress, they have output RSS feeds. So why not just grab that RSS feed and use that in the, in the property that wasn't accepting the YouTube feed? Because you know it will accept that, and it ultimately ends up doing pretty much the same damn thing because it's got the embedded property in the, in the WordPress or Tumblr site anyways. Does that make sense? Okay. Hey Bradley, go ahead. I just posted a format for YouTube that that's working right now. That's for uh, for the videos. That's great. And it just gives you a link, right? Don't expect to get a thumbnail. Don't expect to get anything. You're just going to get a, a the video title and the date when it was uploaded. And that's all we got now. That's but right. that's that's what's working. That's right, and I mean, so that's it. You just use what you can, um, or like I said, start setting some of these up as secondary triggers instead of first tier. You can have a, a tier one network, but have secondary triggers in that tier one network. That's fine to do that, guys. Sometimes you have to do that, or it just won't work right. Okay. Uh, I know we should wait about three or four weeks or so after running a new video through our IFTTT syndication. I know we... Um, I don't understand that. I know we should wait about three to four weeks or so after running a new video through our IF. Oh, okay. I guess to build more links and stuff, maybe. At that point, if we need more juice to get to page one, approximately how many profile Sendwire accounts are appropriate to throw at our tier ones, twos for stacking them for more authority? Uh, that's too many variables there, Ed. I can't answer that one honestly. That's like how many networks is it going to take to rank? And I, I would, I would tell you as many as it takes. And honestly, um, if you're if you're going to if you're going to be building links to your tier one for for YouTube syndication networks anyways, and it's tier one, just throw the kitchen sink at it. It really doesn't matter. So what? However many accounts you have in your SendWire account, <laughs> your SendWire, uh, use them all. I don't care. I mean, my point is is you, whatever it takes to get it to rank. Um, if it was a blog um, um, blog syndication network. Then I would be a little bit more careful. I, first of all, I wouldn't use Sendwire to build links directly to my money site. It's just I just don't do it because it's spun content, blah blah blah. It's just not the best kind of links that you want to be sending your money site. For YouTube videos, it's fine. And if you want to send them to your tier one networks, it's fine. Go ahead. All right. So uh, again, I, I honestly can't tell you, um, you know, how many it's going to take because there's just too many variables. I don't know the competition of the keyword you're in. I don't know whether it's a keyword that you will even show videos. There are just too many different variables. Uh, we teach a ton of different ways for advanced video ranking beyond just the IFTTT networks inside of pretty much all of our other courses. So, um, you know, there's plenty of advanced video ranking training on how to do that inside, like the master class, for example. And in fact, even in the IFTTT training, I think webinar number three, we talked a lot about advanced video ranking. So... 
if you have if you have GSA or um, FCS or SendWire or anything like that, you can use it to pump directly to your YouTube video if you'd like. You also make sure you're using playlists, pump your playlists, pump your channel, all of all of the above. Last question from Ed. Is there any way to run older videos that have dropped off page one through IFTTT network without triggering through a YouTube channel? Well, there's the like recipes, but that triggers through the YouTube channel. The only other way that I know how to do it would be to set up a blog that you would embed the videos on, and, that, and then the blog would have the RSS feed trigger set up for your IFTTT network, and you could do that. So essentially, for example, let's say... Let's say that you had a WordPress.com site that you set up as just a secondary trigger mechanism that you would go and, and take your videos and embed them onto a post, just make a post on the WordPress.com, and when you publish the post, that you have recipes set up for RSS syndication to your Tier 1 network that would just resyndicate that video through the uh, WordPress post. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's a good idea. I've actually done exactly that. I, yeah. I mean, we're, it's a nice to have, and sometimes you just need it, or if, like you're saying, for older videos or something. So, I mean, you can do that, guys. Remember, your your Tier 1 IFTTT net, um, uh, account, you can set up a whole bunch of YouTube recipes, a whole bunch of RSS recipes. There's no limit that I know of. So, you know, if you've got 15 YouTube recipes and you, and you want to add a secondary trigger mechanism, like a WordPress.com site, for example, then you just set up the, you know, 15... RSS recipes to trigger to the same channels, the same um, Web2 properties. Does that make sense? Okay. Wow, that was a really long question. Um, Brian says, do I, expi I buy expired domains with high metrics and 301 direct from the cPanel to a Web2.0? Would that give off the same link juice as building out the PBN? Well, I suppose it would push the same domain juice over to the to that Web2, but what the, the beauty of building out an actual PBN type site is the fact that you can use it for more than just one link. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You get, a, you get and, a hell of a lot more mileage out of a domain that you build out into a PBN than you would mm -hmm. do by just redirecting. Yeah, and not only that, you, that way you'll get a contextual link, yep. which is more powerful, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true, because so, that's, that's correct. I mean, if you're doing it strictly to push juice, then a redirect is fine. But like Ron just said, if you're if you have a bunch of inbound links coming to the domain that you purchased, and you set up a PBN like an actual blog on it, and put a piece of content that's relevant to what you're going to be linking to, and use an anchor text link, you can push relevancy through there. That's where you inject keyword relevancy and topical trust flow right there at that point. Okay. Dan says, what would be the best way to build a mobile-friendly website for a site not on WordPress but on Yola, and how much would you charge for this? Um, I don't know. I've never built any mobile websites on any platforms. I've used um, HTML templates for mobile websites and put them on subdomains and then used a redirect plugin that would redirect mobile visitors to the subdomain. And I've used a couple, like, small PHP, um, like, little CMSs that were basically, like, WordPress for mobile. Um, little tiny, but I've never done any like mobile site builders because you know that's only on a rare instance that I've ever built mobile sites, guys, and that's just for clients that have sites that they don't want updated. For the most right. part, you just get a new WordPress theme mm -hmm. and update the WordPress theme, and it's taken care of. Yeah, which is yeah. responsive. As yeah, long as responsive, it's responsive. Theme, that's right. But they're saying not on. Yeah, so I guess if it's not WordPress, I'm sure you can find something that. Yeah, is. I haven't. I haven't worked on Yola, to be honest, yeah, um, but I, I know that probably, you know, even if you have HTML responsive, because responsive doesn't have to do with the, uh, it has to do with the CSS, you know, so as long as the CSS is responsive, you can even get HTML responsive themes. So I think you will need to do Yeah, that. and I'm just looking right now, and it looks like they have, I'll pop a link in here, but it looks like they offer responsive templates, so... Um, mm -hmm. I'll just pop this in. The yeah, so I mean the, my, the easiest route, like with, again, with WordPress, I typically would just talk the client into up, upgrading or updating their website to a, a, a more modern theme that was automatically responsive. I don't have any experience with Yola, so I'm not sure. But at the very minimum, um, I know you can install a mobile site on a subdomain. And then do a redirect. You can use a PHP redirect script or plugin. In, in WordPress, there's plugins that do it, but you can uh, you can do it with HTML sites or even CMSs um, by just injecting a certain PHP code that will detect 
the what is it called the user agent or whatever the browser that's um, coming to call the site and it will mm -hmm. redirect mobile browsers over to the subdomain. Yeah, which is usually m. Yeah, dot m dot. dot mm -hmm. it's usually m dot whatever your domain is. So that's just again uh, that's that's the only thing I don't have any experience with Yola specifically, but um, I have been in those shoes before with WordPress sites and the clients being too cheap to update their site or whatever, and then I've just had to build HTML sites on. Um, on a, on a mobile at m dot subdomain. So Scott says I noticed how Google has a website builder host place. Would this properly add any SEO benefit or stacking value? Um, yeah, sure it would, but I'm not sure which one he's talking about. Maybe Marco knows because he didn't name it. Scott Google Cloud maybe is that what it is? No, no, I I I think that there is actually. Uh, they do offer website building, but it, it could be Google Google Cloud. I'm looking into so many different Google properties that I can't keep them straight. <laughs> <laughs> but I can look into it and and, and let him know. Is yeah, Scott okay. on the on the mastermind? Uh, yeah, if he's still on the mastermind, Scott, that would be a great question for in there because we can get into it. Do some but digging. I mean, it's it's a it's another uh, Google property, and Google pays. Yeah. Closer attention to its own, although they tell you they won't. Yeah, we know for a fact that they do. Yeah. Number two, I have domains reserved to protect my space around a money site, for example, .net, .org, .co, etc. Should I build out a site on each of these, or just have a redirect done on the domain registry? Um, well, Scott, the thing is, the redirect is great. That that's typically what I do because if you're going to set up sites on those, you just got to make sure that you're not setting up sites purely that, that t with the with the obvious if somebody were to look at those other sites especially like a Google reviewer and you were using them basically as a little PBN network to to link to your main.com money site then you could end up getting all of your sites de-indexed or penalized because that that they would be looking at that and saying oh he's clearly doing this to game the search results and because of that we're going to give him a manual penalty or de-index them all together and that's certainly possible so if you're going to use those other domains to build out, which makes sense to do so, just make sure each one of the domains is unique. In other words, it it has it serves a separate purpose other than just for link building to your main money site. So you could create like unique blogs for each one of them that have to deal with a specific, uh, you know, a sub niche within your niche, for example. Or if that's if if that doesn't seem feasible, then just leave them as redirects. You know, I've done it in the past, and, and and you can certainly create a little link network out of them, but you just want to make sure that they'll pass a manual review. That's the whole point. Okay. Number three, the numbers I've seen for native uploads to platforms get better visibility than a URL link. Should video uploads to Facebook be native or IFTTT buffer, etc.? I've heard about Facebook uploads direct getting better results inside mm -hmm. of Facebook, but I yeah. don't think they get any results at all in Google. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah, that will be more like a traffic standpoint than a than an actual yeah. SEO standpoint. That's correct. So yeah, if you if you wanna if you wanna increase interaction and, and traffic and 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 views, uh, because views on Facebook like they are dirt cheap. So if you're advertising on Facebook with views with video views, but that will be a, fa a Facebook kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, two questions real quick. I think I'll answer, and then we're going to wrap it up because we got masterclass starting in just a couple minutes, guys. Earl says I I could use some recommendations on press relay sites. Excuse me, which are the best and also most cost effective for use with local markets? Um, well, Earl, I have two paid subscriptions that I use. Um, one's for Newswire.net, and the other one's for Press Advantage. I like both of them for for different reasons, but uh, I like both of those. I don't know whether those are cost effective or not. I can tell you that we are going to be releasing press release services from inside of Serbspace dashboard within, I don't know, hopefully within the next 30 to 60 days that'll be, I know that's probably too far out for you Earl, but it's something that we are working on uh, to where you can order press releases from inside Serbspace. In fact, we should have press release writers in there too, so it'll be like all under one roof instead of having to, you know, patch different services together to make it work. I know um, Joe Hughes has a pretty good service called Press Release Whirlwind. Um, if we have a link for that, Hernan, maybe you could drop a link and tag Earl on it mm -hmm. for Press Release Whirlwind. It's like 79 bucks, but they write the press release and do the distribution and everything for you. It's a good service for that. 
Um, but there's also, if you're going to be doing them on a regular basis, then I recommend that you do purchase a subscription to somewhere because it'll be cheaper overall that way. But you're going to need a good press release writer unless you do that yourself, which I, I couldn't imagine writing press releases because I'm just no good at it. Um, but there's a, a one of them is called Release Wire. It used to be SB Wire, but Release Wire has pretty good pricing for um, bulk packages, you know, five PRs per month or whatever. Those are pretty good services. But as far as just one-offs, I would say probably Joe Hughes' press release whirlwind is probably going to be the best that you're going to get, at least as far as I know, for, for the cost, in other words. It's, it's inexpensive compared to some of the other PR sites. Yeah, and they not only the, – they'll also offer, I think, a link building package as well with the press release that you can use to power up a Tier 1, for example. Yeah. All right, this will be the last question at Caesars. Uh, if you're linking from one silo to another, do you use no follow? Yes, because you don't want to bleed the theme. And you can do that. It makes sense for your visitors sometimes to link over to another silo, but you just want to no follow it so that you're not you're not bleeding the actual theme or the relevancy of that silo into the next. Okay. For video powerhouse, is it realistic to say you can rank a video for a semi-competitive keyword niche within 30 days? Reason being is I'm thinking about using video ranking on Google as a foot in the door prospecting strategy. Either offer a money back guarantee or ranking a video for them for free with the purchase of SEO service. Uh, yeah, video powerhouse should work. It, it's always going to come down to the the keywords that you're targeting, though, Caesar. That's that's the number one most important thing when it comes to vi ranking videos is proper keyword selection. Okay, um, in my opinion. And then from there, there's certainly things that you can do to brute force a video to rank. But if it's going to stick or not, and if it's the type, right type of keyword for videos, that sort of thing, there's a lot of variables there. But, um, yeah, Video Powerhouse is definitely a, a benefit for that. And it's only going to continue to get better as we continue to build out the network. So that is definitely something you should jump on if you're going to be doing a lot of video SEO. Um, as far as a, rank, a foot in the door strategy, I don't like money back guarantees. What I like to do instead of money back guarantees is I, you know, will tell them, okay, I'll charge you for, you know, whatever the services that I'm doing. Like for example, creating a video for you and uploading it to YouTube. You know, I charge them a flat fee for that, depending on what kind of video they're getting. You know, the prices vary, but I don't. And then for video SEO services, I usually tell them, look, it's cancel anytime. I'll, I'll create. I get paid to create the video. Why well, do it for free? And then I tell them, look, it's cancel any time. So you're not on contract. If you don't like the performance of the video, if it's not producing leads, or if you just decide it's not for you, you can cancel at any time. But I don't offer money back guarantee because then I've lost my, I've lost my time with nothing to show for it. So I don't do a money back guarantee. Um, rank a video for free with the purchase of an SEO service. I don't know. I would probably just wrap that into the SEO service. I mean, if you want to frame it that way so that it makes it seem like it's a bonus to them, then by all means do it. But, um, you know, I, I don't like to start adding bonuses to stuff when I'm for client work unless unless I'm really close to closing the deal and they just need an extra nudge. You got to get paid for your work, Caesar. Yeah. So. Hey, Bradley, one, one last question. People are wondering why you didn't answer your favorite song question. <laughs> Because I don't even really have a fair... I listen to drum and bass, guys, so it's not like... Drum and bass is like... It's electronic music, so it's not like a song on the radio. That, you know, it's not I, Ka Katy Perry or those kind of things? No, it's not oh. Katy Perry or Taylor Swift oh. or anything like that, guys. Oh, so. oh, okay, okay. I don't know. We might have to take a picture of you singing uh, Wrecking Ball or something in Miami. <laughs> so. <laughs> Man, cool. I, I, I figured you for, for, for Ricky Martin or something. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Now, this is going downhill quickly. I'm going to rescue us <laughs> and say, uh, one, thank you to Kim Smith. She says he bought... Uh, YouTube Silo Academy today just finished it. And it's it's exactly what you needed. That's awesome, and awesome. thanks for letting us know. It's cool to hear that. Um, secondly, next week, no hump to hang out. So um, we'll see if we can get something out there for you guys. Maybe me and Hernan can cook something up on the side while we're uh, meeting up, but uh, definitely no hump day hangout next week. Mm -hmm. You got uh, or master class or mastermind. We're all going to be out of town next week, guys. So next week right. is our week off, and um, the following week is Thanksgiving week, but I think we're still going to have – Hump Day Hangouts, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm putting a link in here one last time. Video Powerhouse, by all means, please check it out. Um, if nothing else, you can check it out. Check out sales page, go to SERP Space, and get a free account. Um, you do need to register an account to use any of the SERP Space services, but it's free. 
there's nothing attached to it. Um, you just need to be registered so that you can access that. And reminding, remind you guys that uh, we're at, at once we get about 50 people in, we're going to shut it down until we make sure we can handle that volume. So if you want to be in the first round, you got to get in now. Otherwise, uh, you'll have to wait till we reopen it, which we hope to do in about 30 days, but we don't know exactly when that's going to be. So. Yeah, we're cool. emailing. We're emailing like 5,000 people. So have that in mind, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping yeah. quick. Okay, guys. Thanks for being here. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.